During the siege of Syracuse in 214 BC, Archimedes supposedly defended the city by creating a death ray, instructing soldiers to focus reflected sunlight off of mirrors or their polished shields onto Roman ships, causing them to burst into flames. The story is likely apocryphal, but so intriguing the Mythbusters have tested it on three separate occasions. They examined the myth from many perspectives and discovered that ancient brass mirrors were neither shiny enough nor flat enough to concentrate the light significantly, and it's extremely hard to aim mirrors from a long distance. Nevertheless, full-scale testing did lead Jamie to make the following insightful comment. But here's the thing. And when I was in the middle of this experiment out on that boat with all those mirrors shining in my face, I realized something really important. And that is that they were actually quite distracting and blinding, even painful. And that right there may be the grain of truth at the heart of this myth. Good old Archimedes may not have come up with this trick in order to set a ship on fire, but rather to distract and disorient invading armies. Jamie is exactly right. Archimedes' death ray is more likely to dazzle than to destroy. A practical death ray would have to solve two problems. First, how do you aim a hundred or more mirrors at a sail without confusion? That is, how does each soldier know whether his mirror is focused properly? In addition, the slow and erratic aiming process will give the Roman soldiers plenty of warning that an attack is at foot and take evasive action. Not very effective for shock and awe. Here's our goal. Our goal is to ask how can we maximize shock and awe and improve aim? The answer turns out to be simple and quite within the ability of the ancient Greeks. We aim a virtual image of the sun at the boat with the mirror covered, not the actual image of the sun. The principle is actually quite simple. In the conventional Archimedes death ray, a mirror is placed between the sun and the boat. Light reflects off the mirror and into the sky. Now, if you were to draw a perpendicular to the mirror, the laws of optics guarantee the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So in order to hit the boat, we're going to have to tilt the mirror. By tilting the mirror, the new angle of incidence and angle of reflection impinge on the sail, projecting a rectangular patch of sunlight Add up hundreds of patches, and soon you have yourself a death ray. If all the mirrors were perfectly aligned and aimed, then this array of mirrors would be identically bright along the entire horizon. But in fact, the mirror's images are scattered all over the sail and dancing around continuously. In this software simulation, we can see that even small variations in the position of the mirrors cause the reflected beams to dance around wildly. And if they don't overlap, they don't concentrate the sun, and the sail doesn't catch on fire. Now, Archimedes had an excellent grasp of geometry. And in fact, his treaties were used by later Renaissance and medieval uh, designers to create weapons of war. Following Archimedes, let's use geometry to help the soldiers aim the mirrors accurately. Here's how it works. Again, we have the sun and the boat and a mirror. Now, the light from the sun reflects off the mirror onto the sail. If we mount perpendicular to the mirror a thin sheet of glass, which is partially reflective, some of that sunlight will bounce off along the dotted line. Again, angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection. The rest of the light simply passes through the transparent mirror. To the viewer, the reflected image appears as if it's originating on the other side of the mirror. By the laws of optics, this virtual image will follow the same path as the actual power beam reflected off the mirror. Thus, you can use the virtual image to aim the reflected power beam. In this death ray stand made out of wood, the mirror can be tilted or it can be rotated on its base. The aiming mirror mounted on the top of the death ray mirror can be tilted as well, but only on one axis. Why do we need to tilt the aiming mirror? In the city of Syracuse, Archimedes had to deal with an additional complication. The sun the mirror and the boat are at different elevations. And therefore, the aiming mirror must be tilted to be perpendicular to the plane connecting the death ray mirror, the sun, and the boat together. Only in this way will the virtual image of the sun overlap the death ray image on the sail. So if we draw a line from the sun to the mirror, 
and from the mirror to the boat sail. This defines a plane, shown here in pink, where the mirror that is used to aim must be set perpendicularly. That is, aligned to the green plane, as shown in this illustration. The dotted lines are perpendicular to the plane or the mirror. To reveal this plane, we use a trick adopted from sundials, certainly something Archimedes knew. By placing a gnomon, that little black post, on the mirror, when the shadow is parallel to the bottom of the mirror, you are aligned to the red plane. In this animation, as we tilt the aiming mirror up until the gnomon aligns with the bottom of the plane, you can see the virtual image of the sun slowly moving down till it aligns with the mast. The sun is a virtual image. It's not actually on the mast, but it only appears to be so by looking through the mirror. The virtual image turns out to be a very useful mirage. If the defenders of Syracuse were to cover their shields with cloth and then use the aiming mirror so that they are pointed directly towards the boat, each soldier can separately aim their virtual image of the sun at the mast without the worry of interference from the other soldiers because they're virtual images that only a soldier sees on its own mirror. More importantly, the sailors on the ship cannot see the virtual images, nor do they see dancing reflections on the sail from the covered shield. Imagine the shock and awe when the soldiers are commanded to remove the covers from the shield and the Roman ships are bathed in the dazzling light from hundreds and hundreds of mirrors. Since the original Death Ray story is barely plausible, it's fine to replicate the myth with modern materials. But it turns out the Greeks had access to thin sheets of mica, a mineral which is quite transparent and reflective, as well as polished brass mirrors. Either of these could serve instead of modern plate glass. In this alternative build for the stealth Death Ray, we simply mount the Death Ray mirror and the aiming mirror on a conventional tripod. This provides two axes of motion for the death ray mirror and one axis for the aiming mirror. By sighting down the aiming mirror, a virtual image of the sun is seen superimposed on the sail just above the death ray patch. The aiming mirror doesn't even have to be semi-transparent because your eyes have stereo vision. While your right eye sees the virtual sun reflected in the tiny metal mirror, your left eye looks around the tiny mirror and can see the sail, allowing your brain to merge both images so that the virtual sun appears to be high and bright on the sail. So let's move on to the small scale test. A close up of the tripod death ray, where you can see the two gnomons, so you can aim from the left and right the small aiming mirror, which is actually oxidized to prevent uh, too much sunlight from blinding your eye, and the controls on the tripod. And a close-up of the wood stand death ray with the hand controls to tilt. You can rotate it around the vertical axis on the stool, and of course there's the aiming mirror with its single gnomon. A 50 watt spotlight substitutes for the sun. You can see the target, a t-shirt on the garage door and the two death rays, one on a tripod uh, with a small Amy mirror and a wooden one on a stool, both death ray mirrors covered with towels. Note as we tilt the aiming mirror, the image of the sun moves along with the shadow on the gnomon, but the reflected death ray mirror image stays put. Our goal is to align all the Amy mirrors on the X. Like a real object, the virtual image appears fixed in space as you move your head and view it through the aiming mirror. The small aiming mirror is hand polished brass, oxidized so the sun dims when you view it so you don't hurt your eyes. Note it also aligns with the X. The camera overloads, but it's much clearer in reality. With both aiming mirrors aligned to the X, we remove the towels. Here's the first death ray image, and here's the second death ray image. And as you can see, they're very well aligned. Now to the great outdoors to check the alignment accuracy. Our aiming target is a knot in this fir tree across the parking lot. It's a bright sunny day with occasional passing clouds. The tripod death ray 
and the wooden death ray have both been aligned to the knot in the tree. Now we remove the towels, first from the wooden death ray, there's the light reflected on the tree, and secondly from the tripod death ray, and there's the second pattern. As you can see, they're pretty well aligned. On average, it looks like we can align it to about one half mirror diameter. So the stealth aiming method is confirmed. Now I don't have the budget to make a full scale test, but if we did, how many mirrors would be required? Other experiments and literature results indicate you need to concentrate light by about 25 times in order to burn wood. Over long distances, the image of the mirror expands by almost a factor of two, which dilutes the solar intensity by a factor of four. This expansion is caused by beam divergence from even slight strains in mounting the mirror to a substrate, the sun's angular diameter, and haze increasing the apparent disk of the sun. And no aiming method is perfect. So in the end, you'll need a minimum of eight times 25 or at least 200 flat mirrors in order to burn cloth. If you had parabolic or curved mirrors, something the myth does not discuss, you could do a little bit better, but let's stick with flat. So what do you say, Adam and Jamie? Is the fourth time the charm? 200 flat mirrors and 200 tripods will get the job done. And since Archimedes had the benefit of a well-trained army to aim his shields, why don't you do so as well and see if you can invite some local vets to be trained and learn how to aim the mirrors. Otherwise, this myth will never die.